Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. In the end of last week, Humble dropped two graphic application bundles of relevance to game developers. I'm going to mention the one, and we're going to talk in depth about the other one. The first one is, it's the Corel Draw Design Unlimited Bundle. If you're interested in getting Corel Draw Standard 2024 cheap, this is about as cheap as you're going to get it. Normally, uh, so it's 40 bucks USD, normally 300 bucks. Even on sale, I think the cheapest you'll ever really see it is about 200 bucks. So generally, this is a solid deal. A couple of AI applications in here as well. These kind of their AI. They don't age well, if I'm honest. So the start of the show is going to be Corel Draw Standard. There are some limitations to standard versus professional. They lock out dark mode, for example. And on top of that, you can't export PDFs above uh, 155 PPI. So make sure you check out what the limitations are. But if you've been looking to pick up Corel Draw for cheap, this is as cheap as it gets. Just something to be aware of. But the one that we're going to focus on today is this guy right here. This is the ultimate 3D and VR sculpting character and game master creation bundle. But truth of the matter is, this is the Shape Lab bundle. You're buying Shape Lab. And basically, Shape Lab is like 70 bucks. You're getting it for like 30 bucks. So you're getting it less than half price. On top of that, which is actually kind of cool, if you like it, Shape Lab 2026 is going to come out later on this year. It is available as DLC Unlock, and you're going to get 50% off that if you want to go ahead and buy the new version. Uh, but this is the current version. So this is future proofing your purchase. On top of that, you're getting some base meshes. I'll show you that in action. One course specifically on how uh, to sculpt using Shape Lab. And then a couple of courses on 3D sculpting in general, some more base meshes and so on, and then a couple other tutorials. Uh, so Shape Lab itself is redeemed on Steam. Uh, you'll see here that the price is the price. So it realistically it is um, 70 bucks or 80, 83 dollars Canadian, so 60, 65, 70 bucks USD. Um, so it really is a half price thing. It is redeemed on Steam. You do need to have Steam to use this. And then on top of that, your courses are redeemed over on Fast Track tutorials. You can see them here. They're split down into to multiple, okay, I'm not logged in, but they're split into multiple different uh, se um, sections. Watch them, straightforward videos on things like sculpting and so on. But the start of the show here, let's go check it out. This here is Shape Lab. Now I'm gonna show you Shape Lab in all of its glory because quite frankly, in all of its glory, you're up here. This is VR mode. Yes, Shape Lab, you can actually model completely with an open XR compatible headset, which basically means any VR headsets at this point in time. You're going to see it. Let's go check out what the sculpting is like. There's two modes to this. Since it is a VR app, we're running it in desktop mode, so you do not need a VR headset to use this. It is a very straightforward and simple to use VR application. You've got two modes, scene mode and polygon mode. And you're going to notice when we change them, our entire tool set changed. So on top of that, we've got another set of tools in here for voxels. This was added in 2025, and part of what 2026 is going to be changing. So here I can convert this over to a voxel image. So instead of being made up of polygons, it is now made up of voxels. So I switch over here to voxel mode, and I got various different options. I can paint. I can actually stamp a 3D object directly into the scene. So here, this is where your 3D objects come into place, by the way. Uh, so these can be imported in. These are what you're getting in terms of like the feathers, etc. can be used this way. So if I want, I can basically stamp objects into my scene uh, using, uh, here we are, this currently is in Vox mode. It also works in polygon mode. And yeah, that's kind of the idea behind it. So what I'm going to do here now is go back to new mode. So go back here to scene mode. Here is where you compose your scenes up. You can create Boolean objects. You can create multiple objects like so. Again, we can load in our... Um, our templated objects, of which we've got multiple here. I'll show you loading one in a second. And also here, we got parametric objects, capsules, cubes, spheres, and so on. And you can Boolean them together, uh, clone them, delete them, and so on. And you can arrange your world together. That's kind of the idea behind this particular tool. So you compose your scene in scene mode, and then you do everything in poly mode. So I'm going to go back to scene mode. I'm going to go ahead and default the sacrifice our default sphere. That doesn't sound the same, does it? All right. So here, import a model in, and let's, let's bring in that... Um, unicorn we were looking at earlier on. So here you can see this is the unicorn model. Uh, and then what we can do is start sculpting. So here, go over polygon mode. And over here, you've got all your various different tools. By the way, we have straightforward tools here, like a paint bucket. I could fill the, with a single color here by clicking here. We can pick color, metalness. It uses a um, metal roughness emissions uh, workflow here. We've got masking options here, so we can mask things in and out with the painting. And then we've got simple color painting into our, our object like so. So it's not a very in-depth texturing tool, but there is some capability there and you can export those textured results out. Speaking of exports, if you're using this in your game development pipeline, you will notice export supports OBJ, STL, GLB, and FBX. And then there you can have your textures and you can actually have them embed. So there, that I don't think will work with FBX. 
but uh, GLB, uh, for sure, you can embed your objects out or you can export them out separately. So your textures do come out when you export your objects out. All right, other than that, in poly mode, you're gonna notice a toolbar down the side. So these first three are about texturing. Uh, everything else here is about um, basically sculpting. This one first is stamping. So here you can use any one of those objects. So if I wanna stamp a bunch of spheres to our, our guy, I can do so. Nothing too exciting, basically. It's like a, a Boolean paint, if you will, a Boolean ad paint. So we just gave this guy a Tuma. Uh, then on top of that, we've got a uh, standard brush here. So you can see you can see the fall off radius, by the way, as well. Uh, we can also, here, we can change the, the different axes we want to uh, mirror across. So if we just want to mirror one way, uh, we can do that that way or here, just over the Y axis, like so. Hmm. All right, there, so we're gonna mirror on the X. So here, you can see there, and then it modifies it out there as well. So you've got mirroring and so on. Or you can basically just straight out, uh, yeah. So that, that's kind of your idea there. So there you can see, uh, we've kind of turned him into a bit more of a cow at this point in time. You got clay for building up, so you have a little bit more to work with in terms of your shape. Uh, you have creasing tools like so. Uh, by the way, any one of these, uh, you hold down control and it will go negative on it. So no control, positive value, control, negative value. It's a super easy to use and learn sculpting tool here. You're gonna inflate an existing object. Here you can smooth down, again, fix sort of, this is kind of the oops, I screwed up brush in my opinion. Then we got move where you basically just grab, you're not creating new geometry here, you're just moving it around. We got tentacle where you can actually grab an object and move it out like so. Uh, by the way, you do have full undo as well. Uh, you have a trimming tool here. You also have a flattening tool like so. Uh, and then pinching and then regulize. So that's kind of the idea behind it. And again, your material is available down there. Now where I think Shape Lab absolutely stunningly shines is when you get over here. So you're gonna see over here, we've got, uh, so there's your ultimate material. So if we wanna do a basic uh, matte cap on it, we can. We've got very different options over here, but come on down here. Uh, we've got transform tools for this guy, nothing really special there. We can also create subdivision surfaces, both higher and lower versions. So here we've got um, 65,000 polygons. We could actually subdivide it up or down. We can remesh and it's the remeshing tools that really blow my mind. So here you can see right now, uh, we've created a bunch of geometry that's not necessarily great, but our base mesh was a bunch of try uh, was a bunch of quads, so it's not going to do too much there. But we can do a voxelized remeshing. So what I'm going to do is here, and we can say, okay, remesh this. I'm going to make this like uh, half half resolution, half smoothing. Uh, so here we boom, and I think half actually means double. So here you can see now we've got uh, kind of odd topology going on there, right? With that, that retopology that we did. So what I can actually do now is I could come back here and say, no, 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 that's not what I wanted to do. What I want to do is take this guy. So I don't want it to be 120,000 polygons. I want it to be more like say, you know, 15,000 for, for my game. I could tell it how to set up and then boom, apply it. And what this is going to do is quad our mesh. So basically it's going to simplify it, but it's going to simplify it into nice clean quads. And it does a very good job. There's a couple of glitches. You're gonna see over there, like that's not perfect, but it does a very, very, very good job on this. I can actually almost see using this tool just for importing things in and running them through this because it actually does a good job of creating smaller versions, like a higher resolution and lower resolution resolution versions, but mostly, and most importantly, it does a great job at quadding things. And then here you've also got tools for um, mesh density. So higher subdivision level counts, you can decimate. So here, simple, you're probably not gonna wanna do that unless you're creating a stand-in object. Uh, or as you saw earlier on, we can actually remesh and get this nice quads, clean quads out of it. You got transformation of the topology here as well. Uh, then over here, you can actually uh, transfer details from one source to another. Uh, here, merging and splitting, aligning objects. And then here, this is one of the other features that's going on here, is you can convert things out to voxels. And in voxels, so here, instead of being polygons, you're gonna notice you've got a set of tools for voxel handling as well. So drawing tools, build up, inflate, and smooth. And then the voxel tools, again, you got a different set of options for voxels over here. Uh, and then once you're done with voxels, you can actually convert them back to poly mesh. And once again, let's see how well it does in turning this back to quads. So we're up to 70,000 and let's see if it can turn our mesh of awfulness to, yeah, it does. Nice clean quad lines. So it does a very, very good job on the remesh side of things. Otherwise it's a very straightforward sculpting application that works entirely in VR if you wish, as you can see over here. And then what we saw today was entirely in desktop mode. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. So there's again, the Corel draw one, pretty straightforward. Do you want to get Corel draw for cheap? You can get it for like a quarter of his regular price. 
Uh, and then on top of that, they have this one, which is Shape Lab. Shape Lab, basically, you're getting Shape Lab for a little bit more than half off. You're getting half off the upcoming version if you wish to buy it, and then some base meshes, etc., to work with, a sculpting course, and then some miscellaneous courses thrown in there as well. So I think it's cool. Again, uh, the sculpting tools in Blender have come a long way. Do you need something like this? Well, Blender does not do VR, at least not without third-party patches that don't work particularly well. Uh, so if you're looking for a VR sculptor, there's not a lot of competitors to this. Even if you're looking for a desktop sculptor, if you want something that's simple and easy to use, Shape Lab's pretty solid. I actually appreciate it anyways, but hopefully that was useful to you, lets you know if this is useful. If you use my link, it does help support me, and I appreciate you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Shape Lab, have you used it? What do you think of it? Would you recommend it to others, or would you recommend for people to stay away? All right, that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.